morning. Thank you for bringing us into your presence this morning again. Since on Monday we have been on this mountain. And we thank you for helping us thus far. Why can't somebody open his or mouth this morning and celebrate God? It's been wonderful since the beginning of the program. God is good. God is great. God is ever faithful. Our Father, we thank you. You've been so awesome. Worship him. Exalt him. Speak just good words unto him. He has brought you thus far to bless you. Why can't you glorify his holy name? Thank God for the mighty unction upon the program. Exalt his holy name. God has been so wonderful with us, restoring us back into original place where we belong. We give you all the glory. You are worthy, Lord. We worship you. Is somebody worshiping the Lord this morning? We exalt you, Almighty. Thank you for the mighty move of the Holy Spirit in the movies of the congregation. Thank you for mighty deliverance in our midst. Thank you for all the ministers that you have used. Thank you for all the section of the program. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for this morning. The Father's blessing we are expecting this morning. Thank you for your mighty release upon everyone today. Thank you for the rain of your blessing upon us this morning. Lord, we are grateful for your faithful. Thank you for your mercy that endures forever. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the adoration. Lord, we want to say thank you for everything you have done in the midst of this program. Thank you for how far you have helped us. Thank you for the joy and mercy granted our people. Thank you for the program. Thank you for all the ministers. Thank you for the option upon the program. So wonderful and so mighty. Thank you for your mighty presence in the midst of the congregation. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the mighty deliverance upon the people. Thank you for your blessing upon our life. Thank you for the release of the anointing. Thank you for your grace and your glory. Thank you for how everything has been running since on Monday. The generator, the equipment, the safety, the different section of the program. You've been so wonderful. We have come this morning to say thank you. We have come this morning to say thank you. We have come this morning to say thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Hallelujah. Amen. Brethren, let's invite the presence of the Holy Spirit this morning in the way we have not had it before, that we will experience God in a new way today. In the name of Jesus, what is that your heart desire? This morning, the power of God will come down mightily to meet you at the point of your need. The day one, for adventure, you have not been sorted out. Day two, day three, day four, day five. Today is the day six. You will not go back home the same. The Lord will visit you. Talk to God. Lord, you will locate me this morning. As we enter into this section, the day six of the program, you will bless me. You will bless me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And go Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. As we round up, Genesis chapter 1, verse 31. And God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Lord, today is the sixth day. Everything that you have made, you are good. Is there anything still in my life? Today being the sixth day, make it good. Did somebody pray, make it good. Make my work good. Make my business good. Make my ministry good. As we enter into the seas, you make everything good. And the evening and the morning, when the sixth day, Lord, today be the sixth day. Make my life good. Make my business good. Make my ministry good. In the name of Jesus, give me testimony today. As we have in the Father's blessing, let that blessing stay. Let that blessing. 
Worship the king, 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 worship him, 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 worship the king, worship the king, is the king of glory, worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him, worship him. Oh. 
If you are not saved, then you are looking. Hey!
generals in the house. We want to give daddy a big welcome this morning. So can all our generals go outside and let's welcome our fathers, I mean our father and our mother, and also the resident pastors of the all, all the branches of the World of Commerce Church. Please, you can please go outside with your wife and let's make a big welcome 
to our Father. Today is a day of joy. Let the celebration continue.
press partner. Find a press partner. Aha. Oh. Hello. Say never.
lift your hands and shout a glorious hallelujah. Amen and amen. On behalf of God Almighty and our Father and our Mother, the Apostle over this great commission of raising champions in Christ Jesus, can I make a big welcome to each and every one of us? Hallelujah. And also the people watching online, welcome to this wonderful day, Father's blessings. Hallelujah. Put those hands together and celebrate God. Amen and amen. By the mercy and grace of God today, yokes shall be broken in the name of Jesus. God will neutralize every cause in the mighty name of Jesus. God of heaven will, see, as the blessing is released upon you, it will mark the beginning of greater beginnings in your life today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please, be highly expectant. And I can assure you, God will not pass you by. In the mighty name of Jesus. One more time, put your hands together. Celebrate grace. Celebrate God. Celebrate His mercies. Hallelujah. You may please be seated on your miracle seats. Amen and amen. We appreciate God in Jesus' name. We're going to be starting the Father's Day blessing with a charge this morning. Very short exhortation, and I know someone will be mightily blessed. So with the joy of the Lord, somebody help me put your hands together as we welcome our pastor, resident pastor of the World of Commerce Church, Life Center. Please put your hands together and let's welcome Pastor Samuel and Mokwari. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Is somebody happy to be in the presence of the Lord? If nobody is happy, I am happy. And the people that were dancing here were happy. And the people that were dancing over there were happy. And most especially, I know my father in the Lord is happy. Hallelujah. You see, I want to say, Daddy, thank you, sir. Um, it's not a thank you of one day. It's not a thank you of today. We've been on this journey for over about 13 years plus. I didn't start with the church the day it started, but I joined after about two or three Sundays, and we have been together. Uh, there was no comeliness in any of us. Being a graduate, my wife being a graduate, working with PZ, my wife working in bank. But I will still keep the driving car. I will be looking at better the driving car. I will say, oh, why did I not choose the driving car? But I bless God today. Following his example. I, I, I call him daddy. But inside of me, I see him as a senior brother I never had. Are you getting me? You know, people can call you daddy, daddy, but daddy knows who his child is. And I bless God for his life. I've never regretted it that I came into this ministry. And I bless God. And I want to thank God for all our generals. Bishops, our pastors, our reverend that have been coming along with us. At, at one rate or the other, Daddy has made us to have many friends in the kingdom. And I want to say thank you so much. And thank you, church, for believing in us. And thank God for the testimonies that we have received over the years. I want to say thank you. God bless you. You can please have your seat. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. We are in for a good time in the presence of the Lord today. I've been told to just give a word charge. And I want you to please get it clear. Since the beginning of this service, from Monday till now, one thing has been very certain and been very sure that it is the good pleasure of God to restore us. 
it has been a mandate from heaven that our restoration must come. And I believe it. And I woke up in the morning to look at it that, God, if you have to restore me, what do I need to do? And I had restoration by sacrifice. Restoration by sacrifice, that's what I had. No matter the situation and the circumstances you find yourself, there is always a sacrifice that will get you out of that situation. No terrible situation that can hold you too far until you get the sacrifice. Once you get the sacrifice, that's the end. And I have seen that there's nobody that has ever gotten out of trouble without the sacrifice. Let's open our Bible to, if I read that place, I do. Second Kings chapter 3, 14 to 20. Second Kings chapter 3, 14 to 20. 14 to 20. So he said, Here with me, please go with me. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts be, before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, I will not look at thee, nor see thee. But now bring me a mistress, a musician. And that, then it happened when the musician played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, Thus says the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. For thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind, nor shall you see rain. Yet that valley that you have dug shall be filled with water, so that you, your cattle, and your animal may drink. And this is a simple matter in the sight of the Lord. He will also deliver the Moabites into your hand. And also you shall attack every fortified city and every choice city, and shall cut down every good tree and stop up every spring of water, and ruin every good pieces of land with stones. Now, can we read it together? Now it happened in the morning when the grain offering was offered that suddenly, say suddenly, suddenly, water came by the way of Edom, and the land was filled with water. I see God turning your captivity around. Why did God allow them to wait until the time of sacrifice? The ordinance was from above. The ordinance was stirred up by somebody. Jehoshaphat, that believed that we can't die in this situation. I don't know the situation you are in. I don't know the circumstances that has been prevalent in your life. But that ordinance can be broken when you get in contact with the right man of God. Elisha told the son of Ahab, he said, go back to the prophet of your fathers. If they can do anything, let them do it for you. But if not, for the association of Jehoshaphat, I won't allow it to be. And yet, he made a pronouncement like the pronouncement of restoration that is it's a pronouncement. It came from above and it landed on us and it landed in our hearts and it landed in the whole situation around us. But it's waiting. It's waiting. For the day you will see it that I need to pay a sacrifice. Um, Abijericho. He said, wash in Jordan. Sorry. Jordan. He said, go and wash in Jordan. And he looked at himself. I want you to detect the price that he paid. The sacrifice he paid now to be by his students. 
He said, go and wash in Jordan. And Naaman said, look me, when there are rivers, there are rivers in Damascus, in Syria. And when you started telling him, you better pay the price. Tell your neighbor, you better pay the price. There's a sacrifice he's asking you. Let me tell you. In the spirit, he said, the Holy Spirit, the Lord forbid. You may look at it that, oh, in case daddy did not ask for any special offering, special gift. Eh? Because the Holy Spirit will be telling you, this is the sacrifice I need from you. This is the sacrifice. My friend, Pastor Jola, can give a testimony of that sacrifice so that the believers will be suffering in the church. I mean, he had a land somewhere. He sold it. How much was it? I think it's 60,000. At least 60,000. 7,000. 7,000. 7,000. And he made the testimony. He made the testimony. Sacrifice. Naaman laid down the sacrifice of his pride and everything turned around for him. Anna laid down the sacrifice of Samuel and in 2 Samuel he said that a, a barren woman had given birth to seven. I see somebody giving testimony of seven fold return in the name of Jesus. I want to ask you whatever he asks you you do it? God bless you. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, I know you. Whatever the Lord asks of me, I will do it. We shall be taking our hymns, but I'd like to sing to him by God. Fanny Crosby, America's most prolific hymn writer, wrote 8,000 gospel songs and hymns during a lifetime which spanned nearly a century. She passed away in her 95th year. All her days, except the first six weeks, were spent in blindness. However, not even the loss of sight could render defeat to this outstandingly courageous soul. Aunt Fanny, as she later was affectionately called, also wrote a thousand plus non-religious songs and had four books of poetry and two best-selling autographies published. Frances Jane Crosby was born in Putnam County, New York on March 24th. 1820. A poorly trained doctor applied a mustard plaster poultice to her eyes when she was only six weeks old, rendering her totally blind. Even in her childhood, she realized she had a special gift. She often said, I have a jewel content. When only nine years of age, she wrote, Oh, what a happy soul am I. Although I cannot see, I am resolved that in this world, contented I will be. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. To weep and sigh because I'm blind, I cannot and I won't. During her 15th year, she entered the New York Institute for the Blind. Her record there was such that after graduation, she was asked to teach at the institute. She remained on the faculty for 11 years. One day in 1873, Aunt Fanny was visiting with a friend, Mrs. Joseph Now, a musician of sorts and wife of the founder of Metropolitan Life Insurance Company. During their visit, Mrs. Now played a tune on her piano, which she had recently written. She then asked Fanny, what does this tune say? After kneeling in prayer for a few moments, she rose and declared, It says, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. 
and Fanny began to dictate verses to Mrs. Knapp, who wrote them down, fitting them to the melody just as we hear it sung today. May we rise as we take our hymn, Blessed Assurance. Hallelujah, indeed is a blessed assurance. Oh, it's a blessed assurance. Thank you, Father, for this blessed assurance. We don't got a story to tell about this blessed assurance of His faithfulness. <laughs>
Can we, can we please put our hands together and celebrate the awesome presence of God in our midst? <laughs> Hallelujah. How many of us observe every moment I tell you is thrilling? Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together and appreciate God? Amen and amen. Our dance group is ready again to bless us this morning. So can we please put our hands together as we welcome the dance group. Revelation chapter number 5 talks about a lamb who was slain and who was the only one worthy in heaven to open a seven sealed scroll. Can I tell you there are some scrolls that have been locked up that have been assigned to your business 
that have been assigned to your ministry. They've been assigned to your life. They've been assigned to your family. They've been assigned to your money. But it seemed like you couldn't tap the mystery. You couldn't find the solution tonight. Can I tell you the secret is in Revelation chapter number 5. The Bible says that the 24 elders and the four living creatures begin to raise up a sound of holy, holy, holy. They raised up a sound of worship. I believe that it is this worship that opened those scrolls. I believe it is this worship that caused mystery, that caused solutions, that caused strategies to be open for your business tonight as you raise up your sound, as you raise up your worship. We decree over you that everything that you have been praying for that has been locked up in heaven by your worship, it's opening now. We call forth every scroll assigned to you. We decree, open up, open up. Hey. Open up, open up, open up, open up, open up, open up, come on, I tell you to call your school in, call it 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 in, say Over your family, over your finances, open, 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 open,
go ahead, appreciate them. Appreciate the dance group. That's a very, very powerful ministration is opening up for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. By the mercy and grace of God, you will receive. In the name of Jesus. And one way to receive really quick and fast is when you give your offerings. Amen. So it's offering time. So it's a great honor and privilege. I want to welcome our bishop, Bishop B.C. Bankole, to please help us collect the offerings for the Father's Day, I mean for the Father's Blessing Service. Amen. Please put your hands together. Hallelujah. How many are excited this morning? Now put your hands together for Jesus. What a beauty today. How many are full of expectation? You are full of expectation. You are expecting great things to happen in your life. I don't know about you. I'm full of expectation. And I see that the atmosphere is charged. You will take your own. We we'll learn it, we we'll take it. This money will take something. Something glorious. Something wonderful. I want to appreciate our daddy again for giving us this opportunity of standing on this altar. Thank you, sir. Now, I want us to know that one of the greatest wisdom of God to us is giving. Giving is wisdom. Uh, I know we have had so many times about giving. Uh, of course, we know giving is sowing, and you cannot enter into your harvest until you sow. If you refuse to sow, in fact, the Bible says that you are inviting poverty. And if sowing is given, then we must continue to sow so that we can have an endless harvest. Endless giving will result to endless harvest. And it's your harvest that brings increase. If you want to increase in life, the secret is what keep giving. Tell somebody, keep giving. Just keep giving. If increase is your target. And I believe that somebody you will experience increase by way of restoration. Yeah. Increase is the will of God for you. Increase is the best thing that can happen to anybody. When you are not increasing, you are dying. And that's why whatever will provoke increase, don't stop doing it. And I'll tell you this morning, giving will provoke increase in your life. When you learn to keep giving, what you are doing is that you are provoking increase. And I believe God this morning, may you enjoy endless increase in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me read the scripture, then we're going to prepare our offering. And I want you to give. Don't give casually. You see, the reason why a lot of people keep giving, they don't receive, is because they give casually. Giving is a process of blessing. It's a process of increase. It's a process of a circle of increase. You know, increase don't just call. Something has to start it. And giving is the beginning of the process of increase. Anytime you are giving, you have started a process of increase. How many of you like increase? I like increase. Every time we call me, I don't want to call me next year the same. Amen. And I thank God. Every time I call me another level, praise God. Somebody will get another level. But you know what? There's a process. It's a process. And the process begins with what? giving. And you must give conscientiously. You must give as if you know what you are doing. Don't just give casually. Because if we claim that we get blessing by way of giving, you must do it conscientiously. Do it with all of your heart. And I pray whatever you are doing this morning will be from your heart. Amen. I want to give a quality offering. Don't just give any offering. Give a quality offering. And give offering conscientiously. Now in verse 35. Sorry. I have shown you all things, how they sow. That is Acts of Apostles 20. You see, I have shown you all things. Hallelujah. I will show you what? How that so laboring you ought to support. Is that all right? And to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. How I many want more blessing? One more, let me see. One more blessing. More blessing. More blessing. More blessing. More blessing comes by way of giving. It's more blessed. More blessing come by way of I want to stand up your feet and prepare your offering very fast. Be conscious of what you are doing. You are creating an harvest. Determine your harvest. Somebody say, if you don't like your harvest, change your sowing. If you don't like your harvest, do what? Change your. If you don't like your receiving, change your what? If you don't like what you are getting, change what? So if you don't like what you are getting, change what you are giving. Because what you are giving determines what you are getting. Whatever a man sow, the same way. Lift up your hand. 
thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for this morning. You know, we bless your name because it's an awesome atmosphere of blessing, atmosphere of miracle. And Lord, we are lifting up our hand with our sin, our hand. And we believe that as we cut the seed, we sow into this atmosphere of blessing, atmosphere of increase, atmosphere of miracle. And because of this singular action, nobody here will escape this blessing. We will escape your miracle. We will escape your increase. Thank you for the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Baba, she. We 
celebrate in advance. Because much more than we have, the Lord is supplied. If you know you are a son, For the Bible said it is none of him that will it, not of him that run it, but of the Lord that showeth mercy. This restoration, we are taking it by mercy. The Father bless him. For it to rest upon us, we are taking it by mercy. So lift your hands and say, Eshe, Moria, Luba, eh, O Duba, Eshe, Moria, Luba, 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 Eshe, Oh, just in worship. Oh, just in praises. Oh, just in celebration. Oh, just in jubilation. Say, Titi, I am. Say, Titi, lie. Titi, lie, 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 lie. Say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hand. Hallelujah. Say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody celebrate Jesus! Hallelujah! We serve a living God, and His name is Jesus, the name above every other name. The name that brings healing, deliverance, restoration, uplifting, defense, prosperity. Celebrate Jesus, our King, our Savior, our Master, our Ruler. Jesus, we love you. Amen. It's a stamp of our authority. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. God will celebrate you. God will bless you. We want to come down. That you come down to the front and you will bless us. Overcome us, you know how we do. If you will open your mouth all over the room and call his name. You will call the name of Jesus. Call the name of Jesus. Powerful name of Jesus. Healing name of Jesus. Delivering name of Jesus. Sustaining name of Jesus. Wonderful name of Jesus. Call the name of Jesus. He's a healer. Call the name of Jesus. He's a provider. Call the name of Jesus. He's a protector. Jesus is a deliverer. Yeah. Whoa, 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 
of Jesus. He is our provider. Yeah. All the name Jesus. He is our protector. All the name of Jesus. He is our deliverer. Jesus, Jesus, I say we call them it. 
more time with your hands lifted up. We declare your name. He's a miracle. He's a miracle. General Overseer and Founder of the World Overcomers Ministries, Incorporated. He is also the Coordinator of Global Kingdom Leadership Forum, GKLF. The accountant turned evangelist has a large heart for the people. His love for the gospel and the people is the driving force behind all the ministries he has floated. From pastoring, holding crusades, providing water to indigent communities, help to ministers of the gospel in interior and easily forsaken lands, as well as reorientating and rehabilitating social miscreants, popularly known as area boys. Since receiving a call into the ministry in London in 1989, evangelist Philemon has not relented in sharing the good news with people of different races across different lands within and outside Nigeria. He runs on the slogan of taking the grace to the grassroots. He is married to Reverend Mrs. Yvonne Pelimo, a faithful and resourceful partner and friend in the work of the ministry. They are blessed with four amiable children. Ladies and gentlemen, people of God, please welcome evangelist Steve Coyote Pelimo. Praise the Lord. People of God, praise ye the Lord. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. And the, the, the guy on the console, keep these mics alive. And you prepare it. Let it be alive. Hallelujah. And move it closer to the people. They, I lack words to express my appreciation first to our great men and women of God. When we were coming, uh, they said, as you stay, that we should come only when we are called. And we stay at home waiting for the call. I was not expecting the men and women of God that I've come to celebrate with us to be there. I thought just my people. But that honor that God used you to sow in my life, you will reap in abundance. In the name of Jesus. Enlargement is your portion. In the name of Jesus. It's not because I really worth 
what you have done towards us this morning. But you have done it towards the Lord, and the Lord will repay you. Amen. Don't forget, please give me more volume. I'm not going to scream here. Don't forget, I said that the stage of honor is being occupied one at a time, or one group at a time. If today I'm the one on that stage, I'm glad to let you know tomorrow you will be the one on that stage. And uh, let me put it like this, because tomorrow has been bastardized. Everybody has said, ah, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Some tomorrow never come. Let me put it next, which starts now. You will be the one there in Jesus' name. Honor will locate you. From your sons and daughters, I was expecting your amen. In the name of Jesus, from your community, in the name of Jesus, from government, in the name of Jesus, from the local people, in the name of Jesus, and from foreigners, in the name of Jesus, all over the world, even people that you never knew about, they will honor you in the name of Jesus, and so shall it be. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. This morning, we answer her name. We call it Father's Blessing. And before I start anything, let me define that father. It's not the one that is standing here. Eh? You know, there is no way I can give back to our great bishop, eh? Roland. So I can't be that father. The father we are talking about, we read about him in the Bible. And we say, our father who art in heaven. So is that father that is going to bless us this morning? In the name of Jesus. Before I left home, and even when I came in here, I told the Holy Spirit, you know I'm empty. And I don't want to come and be talking something. I just want you to fill my mouth with the blessing that is needed by everyone. And it's going to do so. Amen. Today is a special day in all of our life, Amen. including myself. I don't want you to look down. Whether you are a minister, whether bishop, whether evangelist, whether you have church or not, you have ministry, you are a student, and your family, or you are a, uh, a business person, it's a special day. Because God is going to penetrate every aspect of our life and pour his blessing. In the name of Jesus. Amen. To continue once again, I want to appreciate you all. I want to appreciate my friends, the great men of God, and our brothers and sisters from other churches that have come to celebrate with us. Your coming is the fact that you are sowing love as a seed. And you are going to reap love Amen. in multitude Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And thank you. Thank you, Lord. Everlasting God of glory will give you praise. We worship you. We cannot thank you enough for the great things you have done for all. Thank you for this moment. We appreciate even the blessing before we receive it. You have given before we ask. We say we are grateful. In Jesus' name we pray. You know, my father and our father Papa Omobudi is supposed to be standing here today. 
we met in America, and uh, I, I told him, you know, because of logistics, sometimes he will come, and he will cancel flights. Then he will have to travel back by road. And I'll be calling nine before he will get back to Benin. And there will be very important assignment there that we wouldn't want to miss. So we just said, okay, this year, let me stand with you. But I believe strongly he is with us. And I give him reverence. I thank God for his life. He, at several times, has sacrificed himself to be here. Sometimes he will have to fly down from abroad to make it. Sometimes he will leave a big meeting, he will rush here, then after it, rush back. So we want to appreciate him, his dedication. Amen. And I believe I'm going to have good reports to give him after this. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know why I'm just full of joy, laughing, and yeah, I'm seeing the aftermath of this meeting. The testimony that will go round and round. And I want you to be alive. Yeah, just flow it naturally. And the blessing from the beginning to the end will be rolling. And any time the word comes that has something to do with you, grab it. Our sister talked about to receive it. You know, God has given, know how to take it. You grab it by believing God that, no, this one is mine for me. We're going to stand on a scripture that is common to all. And our big guy from Canada had mentioned it. One day, I just, when that scripture came to me in the way it was presented, I first sent it to them. Just recorded it and sent it to them. So the theme or the title is Unknown Blessing. What God wants to do in your life as you are seated here, you don't know it too. Don't know it. It's over and above what you have prayed and fasted for. In the name of Jesus. That's why today is very, very special. Unknown blessing. And that's what God is going to do in our lives. I pick my text from Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. Philippians 419. And it's indeed 419. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, but my God. All your need, according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But my God shall supply. Let's flow together. Where are you? I say this to give you this one. My what? My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. You and I know that this is the prayer of Paul Apostle to the Philippians church. And this church was special to him. Paul got busy preaching the gospel. He didn't send to the Philippians church for help. He did not say, please raise money for me. But he knew that this person that is moving from one place to the other, preaching the gospel, must have a need. Just as it was in the days of our Lord Jesus Christ, they will feed multitude. A number of needs were met. 
Even the disciples that were following him will eat. Are you, are you with me? Yes. All right. And there's these women, group of women that put themselves together and began to finance the ministry of Jesus. From their own substance. They were not there to criticize. They were there to minister. I have an idea because sometimes when we step out, I mean, thank God for our Imo brethren that are here. Over 40 of us, when we spent one month in that place, we ate all through. How were we able to meet up the name? Some people supply. Do you understand? And so, God was enjoying that kind of grace. And it came to a point. He spoke to this same church. He said, it's not because I lack something. I'm looking for somebody to put something in my life. But the, my joy is that because you have done this, hallelujah, Amen. you have just opened an account for yourself in heaven. And he was so excited that there's something that is common that I see in the Bible. And I mentioned it, don't, I forgot that day now, during this period. There are things that open the door of heaven and opens the windows of heaven. You know, door and window, they are two different things. And both shall be open concerning you. The window stands for opportunity for you to make it in that business. Opportunity to make that money. Opportunity for that admission. Opportunity. And the door, special blessing just rolling your way. Amen. And so there are things you do. Anointing will just come down upon the man of God. It's not based on the anointing he's carrying about. I see it as a special unction from heaven to break yoke, Amen. to open door, Amen. to open windows. Amen. And the man of God will just open his mouth and the Holy Spirit will fill it. And whatever he declare will not be his declaration. It's God's declaration. Yes, and heaven rubber stamps. It happened in the Bible. You remember that wonderful woman after building the penthouse for the man of God, Elisha. He said, call me that woman. I believe that man sat down. See, he did not ask anything from the woman in the first place. He was just moving. But the woman saw opportunity to be blessed. And until we, the children of God, come to a point where we know Anytime we are giving for the gospel, it's an opportunity to be blessed. Yes, and he said, I perceive, I could see this person that is going, uh, this person is a holy man of God. I perceive. And she saw it as an opportunity to invest in that life. Just the way the Philippians saw it as an opportunity to invest in the ministry of Paul. Are you with me? Yes, sir. And the Bible used the word in King James Version, constrain. He constrained the man to come. Come and eat. Which means the man fell, say, ah, sir, please, turn aside, come and eat with us. I say, oh, no, 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 no. Though, I believe he was hungry. Yes. Just want to be spiritual. <laughs> but sometimes we do like that. They will give us money. Say, ah, no, no, no. Ah. And some people too that is giving it may not be from the bottom. When you say no two times, uh, they say thank you. Are you with me? Yeah. All right. And they, and they will go and say, ah, why did I say no? And I needed this money. But there are some people that genuinely feel that no. And they say, oh, no, 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 no. No matter what you do. When she constrained this man, he turned in and ate. And he kept branching and eating. Follow me. Then the woman, at another time, built a penthouse. It's like making an hotel 
accommodation for this man of God. And he entered, there was a bed, a table. That was like a full furnished hotel. In those days, an anointing came down. from above because of what that woman had done. And he said, call me that woman. Call me that woman. The woman. What do you want us to do for you? Do you want us to talk to the king about you? He said, no. I'm comfortable. She had a need. But she didn't know again. Hey, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. But ah, ah, are we going to waste this anointing? We will not waste any anointing upon your life. In the name of Jesus, the anointing will not be wasted. So at the end of the day, he has he said, he has no issue. Where I'm going, before we start even looking at that scripture, is that God by himself releases the blessing through the man of God. So that was what happened to Paul Apostle. After speaking here and there, you just look and say, but my God. Do you have that in your Bible? Yes, but my God. That's to show that it's not me. What I'm about to say, it's not about me. It's the word that is coming from my God. And when he says my God, he means God, the creator. He means God that parted the Red Sea. He may, means God that brought forth water even from the rock. He means God that stilled the storm. Jesus Christ that multiplied meal. That's what he was referring about. God that can do all So it's not about my anointing, but my God. My God. So this morning, I stand here and say, when we talk about Father's blessing, I'm persuaded that my God shall release his blessing upon every one of us. The God in heaven shall bless you. The God in heaven shall lift you up. The God in heaven shall locate you. In the name of Jesus, it's not about evangelist Steve K. K Pelimo. It's not about my unction. It's not about my anointing. I'm too small for that. But God is big there. The one who knows where your shoe pinches. The one who knows your secret frustration is going to locate you at the point of your knee. In the name of Jesus, he will solve that problem, that hidden problem, that outward problem, that known problem, that unknown problem. The problem on your body, the problem in your home, the problem in your leg, the problem in your head, the problem on your children, the problem on your academics, in the name of Jesus. The problem in your businesses, he will step in and solve it. I say he will solve it in the name of Jesus. But my God My God. It's not about me. You may look at him. He doesn't even know how to speak English. It's not me. That God created the person who is blowing that grammar that you like. He was the one who scattered the language that time. But my God, I don't like that pastor. I don't like the way he talks. It's not that pastor that wants to send the blessing, but my God. And so you have to bypass the human being that is standing before you and get connected to heaven. But my God. And I love the next thing he says. But my God shall supply. Everybody say supply. 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 Say it loud and clear. Supply. Before we look at that, I want to say this, that that verse of scripture is not for every Christian. <laughs> it was given to people that were part of the ministry of God. And it's for anyone that is concerned about the kingdom work. Are you with me? Yes, sir. And you come to a point 
and my God shall supply. Oh God, the people in the marketing will understand this better. Say supply. 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 People in production will understand it again better. Supply. Sometimes you're producing a stuff, one of the raw material you need. You're looking for supply. And uh, if it's not there, there is no production. Sometimes supply will run out. Sometimes you are waiting. You have finished the stock you have. Even your buffer stock had run out. And you are waiting for supply. But this place is telling us that God will supply. Woo! God will supply. You know, you know, you know the excitement I just have now. It does not matter the price of that thing. God will supply. It does not matter how scarce that thing is. God will supply. They may be hoarding it. They may say no importation of that thing. And you need it here in Nigeria. God will supply. And for some of you young ones, it may be admission. Maybe they say you are under cut-off point or over cut-off point. Or you don't know somebody that knows somebody that will connect you with somebody. But today, I say, God will supply in the name of Jesus. That place is waiting for you. That admission to university is waiting for you. Because it's God that will do it. God will supply. Yes. It's God. It's God that will supply. Yes, Hallelujah. Thanks, God. My God. Oh, yeah. Supply. There will always be supply. Yeah. The money you need for that project, God will supply. In the name of Jesus. The trust in God for who to marry. And, and it's like, uh, is that, uh, are you going to say there are no men, good ones out there? They are still there. God will supply. That good husband, God will supply. The good wife, God will supply. Supply. My God. Woo! My God. Sha. Supply. Father, ah uh, ah, uh, this is wood. We carry fire. And we are going for sacrifice. Where is the lamb? They didn't know that. Supply. What was the answer? Oh, did God not supply? supply. That same God is still alive. He will supply your name. He will meet you at the point of your name. In the name of Jesus. That thing that is needful. In the name of Jesus. See, see, there's one thing peculiar about that. You may not even know how. And you don't need to know how. But one thing is, God will supply. He 
will make room for you. Amen. Where they say there is no room. Amen. Why? Because God will supply. If your location is outside Nigeria and they say they are not giving visa, I say God will supply. connection you need. <laughs> you yourself don't know anybody, but the connection you need to get to that place, God will supply. Supply. Hallelujah. One, one other thing that follow it. He said, my God. You can sit down. You can sit down. You can sit down. Where we are going, Stifa. <laughs> Young man. He says, my God shall supply. You know the next thing? All. Everybody say all. Say all. Excitement. Sit down, let me tell you. Sit down, let me tell you. In the little years I have spent on planet Earth, I have seen some people that are wealthy. Money is not their problem. They have much more than their children's children, 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 children needs to spend. You get to their plane park. What did I call it? Not car park. Plane car. You see? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I was reading one thing recently. Papa Copeland has given out 27 aircrafts. Then somebody will buy one here. Some people will have headache. Some people will have headache because of God's blessing upon your life. Hey! In the name of Jesus. I will have headache. It's not a cause, so I'm not causing them. Because, oh God. Let me leave them and move forward. I have seen people in position. They have money, but they don't have good health. They manage themselves every time. When they stand there talking, something inside is squeezing them. They may use medication to suppress it. And I have seen some people that are super healthy. Kakraka like Bakuba. But they have no money to enjoy life. There is always one lack or the other. But I see this prayer from Apostle Paul erasing that. He said, My God shall supply all your financial need in supply. All your physical need, your health, 
Oh. All your knee. Oh. Academic knee. Oh. All. Everything oh. together. Admission oh. to university. Oh. Oh. Money to enjoy life. Oh. House for you to live. Oh. Your businesses. Oh. 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 Is it not in your Bible? You know, this principle had helped me many times. When I run into trouble and I need something from God, I will approach him on the fact that, look, you are the one who did this one for me. The same God that did this. He will do this one too. And I draw faith in the aspect he has done. Draw faith. Say, you want me? Ah, you can ask my wife. I begin to repeat that. Ah, ah. See now. The one who did this, he did this. Ah, how will you not do this one? He's still the same God. We call on him. He answers us by doing this. As we are calling on him, he's going to do this one. Yeah. And so when you say, my God shall supply all. The joy is that if you are seated in this room and you came in struggling with your head, I congratulate you because your healing is secure. Amen. If you are in this place, depth had enveloped you. Hey, Here and there. You owe this, you owe that. I congratulate you because all that debt will be paid for Amen. in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you are in this place, you are managing your marriage. Hey, I congratulate you. There shall be peace and progress in that aspect of your life. Oh! oh. Tell your neighbor, oh. oh. Say it loud and clear, oh. oh. Whether it's your business need, it's part of the all. Your need concerning your children, all. Oh. All. 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 Shall supply. All. All. All what? Needs. All your need. All your need. Chai. Yes. My emo brethren, when we travel, when something hits their head, they'll say, Chai. Chai. So, chai. All your need. All. I was looking at this verse of scripture not too long ago when I needed to send a message to them in Canada. And when I got to that point, your need, 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 my eyes opened to something. And the thing is this, there are two types of needs. I classify it that way in this. I know you may be analyzing this, but for, for this, the purpose of this message, two types. The known need and the unknown need. The known need are things you, you hope and wish for. You have prayed for it. Some of you have fasted for it. You need that thing. You know you need it. Huh? So, if the spirit of prayer descend here and now, and we begin to pray in our understanding, and they even ask you to fast for 40 days, you are going to fast for your known need. Those are the things you want to ask, Lord. Oh, I need my house. I need this job to go. I need that one. I need admission. I need husband. I need this. I need... Fine! That's part of the all. But it's not all. Somebody following me this morning. 
are you following me this morning? My God shall supply all your need. There is another part of that need that is not known. And the same God that is interested in your known need is, is also interested in the unknown need. And because he's committed to do all, to supply all, so I stand here to tell you that he will supply both the known and unknown need in Jesus' name. You know why your amen is sluggish? It's because we don't have the understanding of the unknown need. Talking of the need, I will change your destiny. Can we bring out something from the Bible? Peter, I love that guy, Peter. It's my guy in the Bible. Peter, Moses. These guys, two guys. Oh. He labored all night and got nothing. Say nothing. nothing. All night, nothing. And he began to watch his net. And I want to say, in preparation for another time. So that was even a good thing. He had hope that they will come again. That you fail in business yesterday it doesn't mean you will fail today. All you need to do is to take another step. There was a need in his life known to him. He didn't want to go home empty. But the way things are, it's like he will go home empty. And it was a bad, bad business day. And the process, not in the washing, that same God we have been calling step in, in human form. And his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The I am that I am. The creator of heaven and earth. He was there in the beginning. And he determined the end from the beginning. And he didn't go there by accident. Your blessing is not by accident. There was a need in his life. The wife must eat. Children must eat. But now, no fish to say. And Jesus came in and said, hey, old boy. He entered his boat and commanded him again to push him. And he's like, I'm in. So we should not say, uh, I don't have something. There is always something we can give for the kingdom. This program is like this because some people have given. They gave, some people gave their time. You see some small, small kids. They don't have any income. But they will come. We will run around, we will arrange something, we will, they draw a cable, they, you know, they were giving. They gave their time, they gave their energy. And some people gave in form of money. And that's why it's like this. Are you with me? Yes, so at that time, what Jesus needed was the boat and the energy to push it. What Peter knew that he had need of was fish fish. So, but it was like, hey, so there will be a supernatural power in display for him not to go home empty. He had need for that. He knew, ah, I need, I need something. And that's how a number of us, we have yearning in our spirit concerning the thing you need. And it will take supernatural intervention. And that supernatural intervention is available in this place. You will not live here without having that need met. In the name of Jesus. Jesus preached. Peter had, multitude had. Many were blessed, including Peter. But after that, because Peter was part of that mission. That's why I'm not raising money. I just want you to have, hear this. 
anywhere and you are in a ministry where they do mission work. Ah, break your leg, your hand into it. Know what chicken say? Foul. He say, even if the soup will not be sweet, it will be recorded I have broken my hand, my leg, my wings into it. Hallelujah. And something happened, and I like repeating this all the way so that we understand. All the fishes that decided to dodge the net of Peter throughout the night, they would throw the net, and the fish say, hey, not tonight. Just like some contract has been dodging you. You put it together, you think, oh, I will hit it this way. <laughs> and you, you play off. This time when Jesus began to preach, I've said it before and I'm telling you again, the fish is gathered to listen to their creator. You say it's sweet mouth, it's in the Bible. When they went to pray, 40 days, 40 nights, my Bible tells me that why that name are gathered around to watch their creator. So Lion will say, this is the person who created me with power like this. And he will shake his chest. And he will hey, hey. In admiration. Did they attack Jesus? No, they came to give him praise. And they were there to do anything he would want them to do. But Jesus finished praying and left. So Jesus finished preaching. The fish they were still listening. And they had Jesus when he said to Peter, come on, take your hook, go to the deep, throw your net. I mean, take your net. Throw your net in the deep. I said yesterday, it would be an error to think that Peter was not fishing in the deep. I was in that sea. I, I, we know how it is. He was a professional fisherman. He knew the time and season. Do you understand? But all of those things fail him that day. So your knowledge may fail you. Your connection may fail you. Everything you have been doing before that was bringing, they may come, it may fail you. But there's somebody that cannot fail. Everything work according to his command. The only thing, let me permit me to use the word thing, because it's supposed not to be thing according to gram, grammar. The only thing that many times refuse Jesus is human being. When he spoke to the air, air obey. Storm obey. Water obey. Fire obey. Everything obey. But when it comes to human being. But I declare and declare today from this day henceforth your name will not be part of the people that disobey Jesus. It shall be reckoned that you are one of the people that used to obey Jesus. So those fishes had him. That Peter should throw for a drop. Those things that dodged the net, they started jumping into the net. There are areas of your life where you have failed before. That was before. There is a change now in the name of Jesus. I say a change now. Why? Because our Father in heaven has decreed your success. He has decreed your breakthrough in the name of Jesus. He has decreed a change and you'll receive the change in the name of Jesus. You have to know it. Many times when life wants to treat you like before, tell him that that's before. <laughs> the me of now is different. Can I tell a little story before we move on? They ordained me pastor. A lean looking pastor. Smallish pastor. Eh? Poor pastor. The day we started, all of the things physically that you see from past was not there. But there was something, there was a knowing inside of me that there was a change now. 
And my wife and I, we went out with our KNF, our first car. And we got information that one young, fine, pretty lady ran mentor. And she stayed by the express room. What's it? Sele? Sele bus stop there. And was practicing her madnessology. They tried to move her. Nobody could move her. Passed her. In the bus stop. Next to the family, say, even if you want to practice madness, why not come and practice it in the house? But this, so we were coming. When we were getting close, my wife and I said, no, they ordained me pastor. And there is power in that ordination. It was my friend that laid hands on me. It was not one big man of God, but I was not seeing him. I was seeing God. I drove the beetle car, came down. My wife came down in front from the front seat. And I tilted the seat so that there would be room for somebody to get inside. I went to meet this mad guy, but with the consciousness that it's not the Steve of before. This Steve has power. I have to pump myself to be conscious of that power. So, and I said, I've forgotten her name now. Come, enter that. No struggle. She didn't, whether you win or I have spoken. Sat down, I closed the door, drove, drove out to the mother's parents' house. You are different. Yeah. It's not the you of yesterday. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Why? Because God is at work on your behalf. Yeah. These fishes had. And they made up their mind to obey Jesus. Not Peter. Whether they love Peter or not, it's not material. Some things will begin to work for you from now henceforth. They will even, God will even use your enemy to bless you. I say your enemies will bless you. Your enemy will help you. Even concerning that contract. In the name of Jesus. People that are working against you, they begin to work for you. Oh God, just because you have not started your business, that's why you are doing like this. I say they begin to work on your behalf. In the name of Jesus. And they jump into his nets. All of the things happening as at that time, they are a part of the known need. Are you with me? He had a need. You know the miracle. He fished two boats. If he had presented 10, 20 boats, all would have been filled by that singular draw. Not. And that's why I know that from today, every form of hazard is taken away from you. In the name of Jesus. Uh, all the up and down, up and down. Oh. There is no Jangrova in the sport of God. Jesus doesn't play Jangrova. Hallelujah. He may play football to dribble the devil, but he doesn't play Jangrova with his children. Hallelujah. He takes you up and up and up, and you won't come down. Hey. The thing was fuel. That was a known but there was an important need in the life of Peter that Peter did not know of. If you ask him to pray 20 years, he won't mention it. And that's the same problem we have here. But God has come to solve. Okay, thank God you are a good fisherman. Thank God you have filled two boats now. Thank God for, oh, you build a house from that thing. Thank God, but there was a need. That profession was not what he was born for. Jesus changed his profession. There was a need for a change of profession. And Peter would never have 
prayed for that. That was an unknown need. And by the process of time, even many colleagues that were fishermen like him, they live and die and go. We don't know their name to deal. But Peter, we are still preaching about him. He grew. Jesus said, hey, follow me. I'm going to make you fishers of men, not fishers of fish. He didn't know it before, but Jesus opened him. And he became so blessed that money was nothing to Peter. My Bible tells me that he will sit down, huh? like a bishop, and they will pack money at his feet. And he had no time to count or say that. He had to gather a committee to be spending. Not to raise money, but to spend money. That's another level of blessing. God will take us there. I say he will take us there. He will take you there. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We are talking of unknown I believe we understand now. Yes, Begin to understand. Look at Moses. The same thing happened. He was born right from the one God had planned for bringing him to planet Earth. Moses was born when what? It was an illegal thing for a Jew to give back to a baby boy. But who made the law? My Bible says, whoa. Unto him that decree, unrighteous decree. Every unrighteous decree in any nation today, we cancel it in Jesus. There are so many unrighteous decree. We have to. We have to. How can you explain this? A teacher sent out, relieving of his duty. Why? Because Somebody, you see this person, eh, is a woman. You see naturally God created her a woman. You see all of the signs, the biological signs. And he says, I'm a man. And uh, you, 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 you use she for her, which was the right thing. And they will report you that. Why are you using she? Wrong pronouns. And they will send it. Then, and the law backing such thing. Is it not an unrighteous decree? Before you turn 18, you need your parents' permission for anything, to sign anything. The moment you turn 18, they feel you are okay. But when it comes to LGBTQ or this thing, one tiny police comes and just come and say, hey, small boy, you can say, I'm a girl. And there was the celebration and they will rub us down. What does he know? Are you with me? Every unrighteous decree in any nation will come against it in the name of Jesus. And so, let me not labor so much on, 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 the, big, on the, 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 the beginning of his lifestyle. You, you understand how he went to spend the first 40 years in the palace. And I used to tell people, it's an error for you to think he enjoyed those first 40 years. First 40 years of mixed feeling. In the palace, they would tell him story, you don't belong to us. You are a Jew, slave. You are our slave. Then he will go and meet his people. They will say, you don't belong to us. You that we are enjoying in the palace with the Egyptians. It was a bad situation. So he left them and fled. When, I mean, you know the story. He got to a place where another 40 years he was the shepherd for the sheep of his father-in-law. He didn't even start any business. Even at old age. 
They gave him wife. He had children. If he will pray for another 40 years, he would never have prayed that he would be the one that would deliver his people. But that was an unknown need in his life. Unknown need. God stepped in and used him. I believe you know. There's a place God is taking you to that had not come to your medulla umblangota. He will reveal it to you. And you will get there. I say he will reveal it to you. You will get there. In the name of Jesus. He will reveal it to you. You will get there. In the name of Jesus. There are many, many, many characters in the Bible. How do we explain the young boy called David that was taming his father's sheep? And do you know the way he was being treated? Do you understand? He will never have prayed as that young boy that, oh, I want to become king. Let them pour oil on my head. Was it part of his prayer? There's a position waiting for you that you have not seen. But God is taking you there. In the name of Jesus. Somebody is operating on your land, your own land. There's going to be a royal exchange. In the name of Jesus. They will clear them off. You, you, you will take possession. And your building will come up. In the name of Jesus. Your car has been manufactured. Somebody is claiming ownership now. There's going to be royal exchange. You may not know about it. But it's coming. It's coming. Unknown need. It fills the Bible. We can continue to name one after the other, several people. That never, never, never thought of it. Even so. What was he looking for? The lost eyes. Only for him to be called upon and the poor oil on him to become king. Hallelujah. Amen. I see God doing great things in our lives. In Jesus' name. When we first started the church, one young guy was part of the young, young guy that was moving around with us there. And he, he was into screen printing. Screen printing. You know screen printing. In those days, you want to do celebration, crop, and this. And I looked at him one day. I said, that's not your business. Your business is photography and videography. He didn't know anything about photography. The first camera was given to him by Shola. The, the first video camera was given to him by me, but my friend who could finance it. Are you with me? And I will sit down like this. I say, okay, snap. He will snap. Then I will criticize him. I say, you didn't check the background. You didn't, you understand? Criticize. And he became tough professional on that line. Is somebody listening to me? Yes, Tough professional. He used it. To, there was a time he was the number one photographer to Bishop Oyedepo. So you know that level. He has traveled, he has built houses. And, okay, fine. Whatever he does after that is none of your, but at least my pronouncement that came from God was rubber stamped on him. Where I'm going was this. If you ask him to pray, 30 years, he would never have prayed to be a photographer. There is something that you need that you don't know. But the blessing of the living God shall open it up for you. We watch that presentation and say, open, 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 open. They sang it, they demonstrated it, and it shall manifest in your life. Every hidden thing shall be made open. In the name of Jesus. You just feel you are okay. Like that woman say, I'm okay. 
Do I tell the king about you? Oh, no. I just cool, man. What I did, I just did it because I love the Lord. Fine. But God will not owe anybody anything. And there's something about God. He's a rewarder of them that did you let me seek him. If you, by mistake, do something towards his kingdom, mistake in quotes now, he will reward you. That is the beauty of this thing. Hallelujah. By his grace, I'm a living testimony. He will reward you. He's a rewarder. And the moment you come to that understanding, you won't find it difficult to give. The unfortunate thing is that many times we sow seed in things that are that where you are not even sure of, of re, 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 receiving. One time the stock market was going up. I know some people that went to borrow money and put it there. In Nigeria. Eh? And one government this thing came, the whole thing crashed. But when it comes to the kingdom, it does not crash. There is something that you need that you don't know. That's my emphasis this morning. Because God, what, the blessing of God that is coming upon us is much more than what you have thought of in the past. It's beyond your prayer points. Is somebody listening to me? Beyond your hope and wishes. How I, I hope I, did, I wish this one. If it has come to your mind, then it's a no need. If you have ever thought of it, it is what? A no need. But this thing that I'm telling you, it has not crossed your mind. You have not even dreamt about it. We went to Sakete. 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 Wave your hand. These are the generals there. That's the public of Benin. For mission work, went to do crusade. And we are coming with branch uh, Ilobo. Ilobo. That Ilobo was operating on that course there. And God sent us there to break the course. I've told this story before. No time for the story now. I was there when somebody put my name for visa lottery. He's here. I did not call him. I want to go to America. Oh, please, play. I told them in church, you can play. And some of our members won. But for me, it, it was not part of my dream. I've been to Britain. I started pastoring in Britain. And God sent me back here for a village crusade. And I'm so excited about the mission. So I won't pray. Tell me to pray. 20 years, you will never hear Lord, visa to America. Visa. Visa. Papa say, visa. No. But it was a known, uh, an unknown need. They play. And a time came, they say, I want visa lottery. I said, I'm not interested. Where am I, what am I going to, where am I going to start there? Mm, this thing. <laughs> 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 Yeah. I won't remove it. <laughs> we will struggle together until I get used to it. Shout hallelujah. I'm just using it to explain because when you have a proper understanding, your heart will be open to receive. I stood here, this same place. My member knew that that door opened. And I say, I'm not going anywhere. I'm a leaker. To go and do what? Openly. But my wife saw it. That that door open was opened by God. When she would talk, talk, talk and say, hey, let's go. And do this. Hey, we reached a stage when we needed to fill one form. She would see the part of her husband that she had never seen before. I told you. Don't go there. <laughs> she will lead me, pray, pray, pray. And she had prayer partner. Not me, big bang. They will go, they come and pray. 
they, do, they didn't allow me to know. Then when she would think her prayer had been answered, she would come again. And let's even cons- cons- convert. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God still answers prayers. You know why I'm bringing this? Some of you have missed out of some great things God had planned for you in the past. But he's going to reconnect you today. Yeah. And at the time, Evangelist Evangelio just came and said, Daddy, Daddy, uh, that America thing is for us. It's not for you. So if you don't go now, you are blocking us. You alone in America is more than 20 of us there. The con- connection you will get there for us, you, that we cannot do so. You cannot deny us. You have to go. And that word mixed with faith in me. That was the key. And I went poo, 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 to where I meet my wife. Where is the phone? Eh? Okay, my evangelist went to meet my wife and collected the phone and, and, and filled it. And we send it. And okay. I went initially still reluctantly. Even when I was there. The person who came now to break the thing was uh, Pastor Mukuru came to America and gave one illustration. If you have a driver, you ask your driver to carry your children to school. And he's carrying your children to school. And one day you say, carry my wife to the market. And if you say, no, I can't go. It's a school that I've been carrying your children to. What do you do with that driver? So, so if you, he's using you in the village, if today he says it's this place, settle down and do something. Oh. You must, you know, I preach a message on listening. A number of men of God don't listen. They just feel they are anything they think. That's it. And when they say something, they cannot reverse. Even when they realize that their former decision is wrong. They still want to, they want to, no! Must be able to listen. So that's how we, and after that, the thing I wanted to do that I couldn't even do in Nigeria, my being in America was helping me to do it better. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! See, all of this they are not Alaba <laughs> products. When this one hit market, it was number one day, I would pick it. This one hit market, we got it. A friend of mine saw it and wanted to buy. They just discontinued that thing. And are you not enjoying it? A number of things. What am I saying? There are road doors that God opened for you that you didn't see in the past. We don't know it was a need. But the good thing is this the Lord will reconnect you. The power of restoration will hit you. It shall be restored. I say that need will be restored. That door shall be opened. The window shall reopen in the name of Jesus. That connection shall be renewed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The unknown need. Before we pray tonight, I need to tell these young ones. Some of you, your unknown need is your character. Character flaw. Some are heady. You're going nowhere with that headiness. Young, young ones, you should be serving the others. That's where you will contact grace. But a number of you cannot serve. In those days in our church, we send the youth to go and clean houses. If you are a youth here and you pass through it, raise up your hand. I mean, okay, you are once a youth here. Uh-huh. You see? They, they pass through it. Uh-huh. They will go and clean, clean house. You too clean. 
You see? You are not log ballet. That's it. Yes. That's it. And look at them now today. Are they not blessed? Comfortably blessed. Living in their own houses. Driving their own car. Happily married. But we have youth today. They will pray for this. Pray for that. But there's something you need that you don't know. You don't know that being saucy is your problem. And you, you need to change your character. You need to learn how to respect. You, if you will do that, you will attract help. Somebody say, How, why did you pass your band? You should have continued. You just spoiled a good message. Have I spoiled it? They can't do some anything good, even for their parents, not to talk of somebody outside. And your blessing is in the mouth of somebody. In those days, we move out. We see an elderly person carrying that. Oh, can I help you? You carry that, and I will say, My picking. Good husband. Good wife. Your this, this, this. And they begin to pour down the blessing. How many of you receive that kind of blessing? To even greet is a problem. If you will change today, hallelujah. You will see doors opening for you. Character flaws. Don't settle down. Mark yourself. Mark yourself. I like dodging, lodging, dodging. Ten people are needed to carry chairs. Then you're, you're dodging about. You don't. You don't want to do it. When we were in Christ Chapel, you remember. By His grace, we started it. Yeah. There is this guy, Willie. We will finish like this. All the chairs we used to use were rented chairs. So the young guys will stay to pack me. I was in charge of equipment. To pack chairs. Willie, when we close like that, he will quickly go and buy bread, sandy, and cook. And butter and eat, drink. Then he will start alone, alone. And we have another guy, he likes dressing and will come with walking stick. You too. <laughs> and he will go and stay by the door. As the girls are packing, passing, they will be commenting, Ha, ah, I like your dress. He will do it like this. Willie will stack the chairs here and here and use his hand like a forklift. He won't talk to anybody. He will not complain. He will not say, what are you doing? Won't you join me? No. Just like that. Eh? Be before, yes. Before service and after. And after. From the renter. He walked, not because he was hired to, but he that seated in the heaven was watching. Then one day, the man of God used his connection and sent him to London. London. When my wife traveled to London, he used that, that same energy to, to, uh, to help me carry the log to airport when she was coming back. Now, big man. But the one that was carrying walking stick. <laughs> Check yourself. I see God moving on our behalf today. There is going to be great changes. I see rain of blessing falling in the name of Jesus.
even though I allow you to finish, I see many things there. You just finish it. Don't forget to say, but my God shall supply all. 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 Thank you. You want to drink this kind of water? Come and preach this kind of message. <laughs> My God shall supply all your need according to his riches. It's not according to your power. It's not according to your connection. It's not according to your certificate. It's not according to your energy. But according to his riches in glory. My Christ Jesus. That word is powerful. You know why we don't enjoy reading of miracle? It's because we always think, how will this thing be? So, remove yourself from the equation. It's God that wants to do it. And that word, how will this be? It's in level. We saw it in the Bible. You can say it. God can pity you and explain and you are still okay. Sometimes he will punish you for even asking. Because he expects that. And uh, at another time, somebody died because of that in the Bible. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Ask the same question now. Ah, you know that. I don't know any man. How will this be? And he, she received an explanation because of her level. Uh, Zachariah asked the same question. Ah, he said, at your level, you should have known better. Mm -hmm. And one man, when the man of God prophesied by this time tomorrow, the bag of rice will be sold for five naira. He said, hey, no. even if the whole this thing, ah, how will it be? It's not possible. They said, okay, you see it, you won't eat from it. Can you see level? Depending on your spiritual level. I went to preach with, for one, mini, one man of God. Big man of God. And he said, he came to my hotel. He said he, he needed something from God. And if God does not do it uh, between that time and, and 12, okay, you are there. That he, he, he will take one particular step. I say, don't even wait till 12. He won't do it. Is it not the God I'm serving? <laughs> <laughs> Did I pass my boundary? <laughs> hey, we not do it. We are too big for us. We are been saying such, such thing. Ah, how can you say it? I don't even wait. Oh. He won't do it. Oh. I can tell you that. Today, I want you to believe. He said, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches. It's not according to your connection. And that riches is so big. As cattle on a thousand hills. You can see his riches in the Bible. You can see it physically. You can see it in your own life. There's nothing that is too difficult for him. And that's why I believe today is your day. There's a release now in heaven over this meeting. This is the time to receive a divine visitation, healing power of God is flowing. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be set free in the name of Jesus. Every yoke, whether a central yoke or the one you put your, your neck into, today is broken. 
I say he is broken in the name of Jesus. That yoke is broken in the name of Jesus. You are set free from every cause in the name of Jesus. Who is he that said a thing and it comes to pass when God has not commanded everything that is not commanded by God that the devil is forcing you or forcing on you? Hey, I wipe it off in Jesus' name. The plan and purpose of God concerning you shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. The enemy will fail concerning you. They will not succeed in drawing you back. You will move forward, forward spiritually, forward materially, forward financially. In the name of Jesus, your children will do well. In the name of Jesus, your husband will do well. Your wife will do well. In the name of Jesus, you will serve the Lord. You will serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus, your church will do well. Your ministry will do well. That business will do well. In the name of Jesus, you will make it great. You will be a blessing to the entire world. In the name of Jesus. Say one day. one day. Say one day. one day. We all read the story of Joseph. Joseph had a vision that he will, become, he will become a leader. But ask him to pray 40 years. He will never have prayed to become prime minister in the, in the land of Egypt. There's something you never dreamt of. Something you have not prayed about. That the Lord will bless you with. And I say it shall manifest. The grace for it to manifest. Receive it. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Receive it. Ah. Can I tell you what? In America few years ago when they said there was recession, it was that, during that period more billionaires were, were made. That's the language. People that were not in that level before. Some not even in the level of thousandaire became billionaire in the time of recession. During this period of COVID, a number of people made their raw, raw money. Legally, I'm not talking of uh, those rooks. So. Are you with me? The economy of heaven is different from the economy of heaven. I see great blessing coming in your hand. It will defy the hard time out there now. In the name of Jesus, that blessing shall come. And you will build that house. You will complete that project. In the name of Jesus, you go to school. You finish your school. You pay your debt. They will lift you up. You shall be highly favored. In the name of Jesus, it is your time. It's your turn. Turn to be blessed. Turn to be increased. In the name of Jesus. Joseph again. There's something about God. There are some things that we enjoy fast. We call it fast food. Fast food, there is no fast food in the world. Went to Mr. B. Chicken and chips. He still passed through the whole process before it got to that point. And you that you are picking fast food, you are going to exchange that food with something that took you process before you acquired to. So in the real sense, nothing is fast. But there are some people, they will go through the process, they will not enjoy the end. There are some things you have gone through. Today, I declare and declare, you will enjoy the process. You will enjoy the reward. 
In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Coming back to Joseph. Something is going to happen in your life. And it will happen suddenly. You have passed through the process in the past. Without even you knowing. But now is the time to enjoy it. And that enjoyment will come suddenly. Joseph served in his father's house. His character was built in his father's house. They sold him out. He served in the house of Potiphar. He showed good character in the house of Potiphar. He would have slept with that woman and say he's enjoying it until he will be caught and his destiny will have been rubbish. Then they put him in prison for the offense he did not commit. And he served in prison. Are you with me? But a day came. A day came. And to the day came. And today is that day concerning your life. Yesterday he slept. This morning he woke up. From the same bed in the prison he has been sleeping on. Without knowing that in heaven the equation has changed. Hallelujah. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. Who set the time? God. Oh God. I say who set the time? God. Are you hungry? God. Who set the time? God. The time for what? The time for restoration. restoration. That time for favor. God set it. Say, thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time. God has to repeat it by saying, yea, which means it's unchangeable. He said, the set time will come. Oh, God. The set time had come. That was what worked for Joseph. He woke up in the same prison. Breeze was blowing. He saw the same friends. But God has started his work long before that. He was pulling string. They didn't know. When Joseph was sleeping, God was at work for him. The king could not sleep. Something is happening now. Someone is running around for your sake. In the name of Jesus, somebody is working out something for your sake. In the name of Jesus, somebody is fighting for you somewhere. Yay! The sad time has come. And when that time comes, no power can change it. No government can change it. No lawyer can change it. No judge can change it. No wicked man can change it. Why? Because God set the time. It happens for Mudekaya. So it's not a one-off something. It's a common thing. It happens. God will be walking. You are still there in the same position. So you woke up and uh, but things that you begin to enjoy, the change that happened in heaven is the manifestation we we'll begin to see here. On earth. That contract, they have completed the award for you in heaven. Now, Listen to me, you, you, you young one. Anywhere you are, when you listen to any prayer points, it may not be applicable to you now, 
But you know, in future, you will decide, let your yes be super high. Yes, if they are praying for the grandchildren of some people, and you are not even yet married, what should you do? Yes. That is what we call long-range weapon. You do that and it will be waiting for you. And one day, like Joseph woke up, and it become the day. So it become your day. Amen. And we saw Joseph. There was problem in the palace. The king dreamt. He needed somebody to explain the dream. And they were searching for somebody. I see in my Bible, sir. I see in my Bible. It is a common thing for, for the situation to warrant that somebody should be searched for. They search for David. Do you understand? I made him king. At another time, they call him to, to come and play for many people like that. Do you know the next person? It's you. They will search for you. They will search for you. I say, hey, your admission is true. Come, come, come. In the name of Jesus, they will search for you. That that contract is ready, come. They will search for you. That that job is ready. Now come and take it. In the name of Jesus, they will search for you for good things. In the name of Jesus. That is how. There was a message from the palace. Many times we have received message from low, low, low places. Your next message is from high, high places. Contact you thought you will never have. I see God bringing it unto you. They look around and around and around and say, nobody except so and so. And you go. They say to David, the king needs you in the palace. Them, um, for Joseph. The mind of Joseph, may we have it. Amen. They said they need you now. Now I said, whatever be it. Wait, wait, wait. Let me shave. Let me shave. Which means, for those of us we are, we be a, be a, there are some positions that is not meant for you. <laughs> Forgive me if I have offended you. Uh, so, so, let me shave. Let me change my dress. Those, for those of you that we are all of the uh, 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 rag, uh, all in the name of fashion. There are positions that are not meant for you. Do you understand? They can't call you to the palace and you, are, you dress like that and say, no, no, no. That doesn't mean you will not be blessed, but there are top, top positions that they. Huh? Abi Oga, you should be your CEO of a bank. You know the people you employ. Sir, have I passed my badge? No. He changed. And look, some of you are filled with uh, excuses. Or you want, uh, some people will just have gone there and say, ah, when I get to the king, I'll tell them they just uh, put me here for the offense I didn't commit. Is that your problem? Or the future you have been believing God for? And you see, going there is an opportunity. Let me dress and feel. From today, your dressing must change. Let your dressing reflect that place of honor. Your dressing will reflect the place of royalty. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I was talking to somebody during this period. He said you have two trousers and you won't know. Two trousers. Highly placed person. And you all know. Just change it and wear. Yeah. I used to know somebody that had just worn trousers when we were in higher institution. And he wore Wash it. Put, had two shirts, one trousers, and one snake like tie. As a student, you see him, his shirt always high on. And we didn't know it was only one trousers and two shirts. What are you tell, telling me? And God lifted him up about that. I see a lifting. 
And they call him in a hurry. See, we have, we have entered into the realm of the miracles. The miracles. They say, come in a hurry. He said, wait, wait, sir. Help me shave. Shave. Change the dress. I'm God there. And he got there. The wisdom for you to speak the right word. Receive it. At the opening of your lips shall be the right thing. Receive it. Many times our mind are filled with junks. And that's what we want to pour out. When I get there, I will tell the king. No, it's not your. God is not going to use what you had already known. He's taking you to the unknown. Yeah. And they got there, the king, the dream like this. He opened his mouth and said, Ah, this dream is like this, it's like this, it's like this. And he didn't put full stop there. Wisdom hit him. He advertised himself and said, You need a man who has the spirit of God. You need a man. That we do this and do this. You need a man. If such man had been in the palace, there wouldn't have been any need to call him in the first place. And, and the same God hit the king and he bypassed every uh, <laughs> protocol and every tradition that say, hey, this is Jew, a slave. He cannot be so so things. He bypassed it and say, You are the man. Come on, point to your neighbor and say, You are the man. You are the man. You are the man. You are that person. In the name of Jesus, you are the man. 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 Thank you. You know what? You know what? I just see blessing in our mouth now. Do you know what? We are going to sow the seed of blessing. You're going to turn to somebody that is not a husband or wife. When you say you are the man, you begin to release the blessing. You are the man. Right? So, so, so things be careful. You are the man. That is, you, you understand? And you begin to release blessing. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let go, let go, let go. You are the man. You are the man. You are the man. You are the people. You are the man. You are the man. For favor. For lifting. For help. And you are going to reap what? 
Miracles. If you want to sit down, sit down. I just want to... Uh, which language do I use? See, God has so much for us. And I want to get it and deposit it. I, I want to leave this place empty. Not allowing anything. You want to sit down, sit down. You want to sleep, sleep. You want to snore, snore. But I see something. Something happened some years back. Some of you have had it. But it's relevant to what is about to happen again. Yeah. Pastor Shola, some guys, we were busy in this place. Arranging new equipment. We were testing new equipment. And I was around this place. I could still recollect. And my phone rang. And I went to where I kept it, around this place. I stood there to pick the call. And somebody that had a really good name in the past was the one calling. And the person said, congratulations to me. And the word that came out of my mouth was, which one? You know why? You know why I asked that? We were testing equipment. And at the same time, we just bought a new truck for our equipment. Big glory. I mean, when you say truck in America, it means another thing. But truck here means uh, trailer. Our first row, we just bought it and the excitement was still in, it has not finished. And we bought equipment in, in those days from Alaba. Are you with me? Yes, so joy times joy. You know, when you are still celebrating one miracle, another one will happen. So I said, which one? Do you know his answer? He said, I heard that you have joined a group that is now using Jeep. <laughs> the Jeep, that's my first Lincoln Navigator. I was purchased in 20, uh, 2002. Uh, so he, he was not current. Put <laughs> a current. And my which one to work? Is it? I wanted to know whether which one did you hear? Is it the equipment? Is it the truck? My mind was not even in the gym. And I see that that is going to be your language, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, when they are congratulating you for something. You will say which one? Well, why? It's not. It's not that you are wasting language. It's because there will be several miracles. If you believe it, just begin to say, "Thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God, thank God for that car, for that land, thank God, thank God for the miracle." Joseph, he will do it. 
I see a number of people. Listen to this. And I've crossed 30. Some crossed 40. Some above 50. And they are still paying rent. By the grace of God. By this time next year. You will come to this palace call with the key to your house built by you in the name of Jesus. You will come to this place, the key to your house. You will have moved to that house. You move to that new house. You come out of rent. You come out of struggle. In the name of Jesus, you will own your own place. Your wife will own her kitchen. You control the gates to your house. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, it shall come to pass. It has come to pass. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, it is done. And listen to me. Never you worry yourself about the price of cement. The price of cement is not being controlled by God. It's human being that is jacking it over there. And our God is higher than whatever be the price. That's why when we are building, by his grace, we are always, there is always something we are building. I don't mind whatever the price is. Some people will say, let me wait so that it will come down. But unfortunately, it's up. There is a release from above. Reverend Bodhi Aguda, you and your wife coming. Just, just, just stay here. You remember the time you invited me to one church that, uh, before you started something. And there was an unction that moved along this line to pray for people that are believing God for their own house. He himself, both of them, you have not built a place. Not even a land. But the grace hit him. With speed, he bought, we won't say land now, because it was not just one plot. Eh? Two acres. Somebody that could not buy one before. Bought and put this magnificent, some of you know his house. Duplex on it. Are you going to tell me that you went? Come, 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 come close. We are say, doing this to help you so that you can believe. It's not so sometimes you just see somebody is jumping and jiving. It's the Spirit of God that is moving mightily in this place. And whatever is coming out is coming out from Him. That's what I started with. It's not about me. Come on, talk. Well, all I even had in mind is just to build a place. Roof is half, and then be living there or be put my children there, maybe one or two rooms. But Papa said, we have started. It will not stop. Amen. And it will be completed. Amen. And with less than six months, the new place was completed. Thank you. Now, we are talking of between now and next, and that's, that's one year. It's six months, not inside, it's a subset of one year. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Subset. And the grace started hitting, he started hitting their land there. And the big king will come and say, come and buy this land, just pray for us. 
like this, this uh, just like that. And the time came, he too so loud. Are you with me? Don't ask, how would this thing be? Thank you. I just want them to believe. I said you will come here with the key to the house you just built in your pocket. In the name of Jesus, it shall come to pass. And if you have built before and you are believing God to build again, so shall it be concerning you. Doors will open in the name of Jesus. Don't forget, if you want to sit down, sit down. Joseph. When he got to the palace, <laughs> he did not look inferior. From now henceforth, anywhere you are, no inferiority complex. I break that yoke. If they call you to stand before kings, whether president, whether this thing, you are, see, the, if there is anybody that is big there, it will be equal to you. And that's the person with Jesus. Don't get there and be shaking. What's your name? Uh, 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 Steve. Steve. What is it? You look at them. You are an ambassador. The most high God sent you there. He's the one opening that door. Don't be afraid. They are, you, are, you, are, you are sitting for interview. You are shaking. The worst they can do is to say they are not giving you the job. And when you, when you shake, you disqualify yourself. Do you understand? You talk with authority, with boldness. From this day henceforth, receive that boldness. In the name of Jesus. Oh, one thing surprised me, sir. When they called Joseph, and they say you are the man, and he assumed that position. The position he assumed, he had to use many knowledge. The grammar may be wrong, but the sense is correct. Different, different thing as an accountant, as an agriculturist, as what? Different, different thing. Which school did he have to go to to learn all of that before? What he had done before, grace hit it and qualified him. I see you qualify for that assignment. You are qualified. I say you are qualified. The Lord qualify you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I have one prayer for some set of people. If you are a salary earner here, wave your hand. Wave it up there very well, very well. Put down your hands. Whatever your salary, you know what Yoruba call salary. You need to start business. The Lord will open your mind. What you have not seen before, He will open your eyes to see. It. And He will start you up. And you will not miss it there. In the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to ask anything. From God. Bring out your request and pray fervently on it. What you want him to do between now and next Palasco. I'm not collecting it. You can just keep it to yourself. If it's in your this thing, you may not hear. You like just just talk to it. Talk, talk, talk to it. Something great is happening. Don't, you people don't have anything. You didn't write anything. You wrote. You are writing on it.
talk to him. You will remember this day for good. He's here. He's listening to you. That shall be evidence to show. Evidence to show. In Jesus' name we'll pray. Much more than you have asked, God has done it. And there shall be evidence to show. All the hidden miracle will surface. There shall be a downloading of hanging blessing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sit down. Amen. Hear this. One day, the fortune of Joseph changed. You leave this place, live with that mindset. Somebody listening to me. If you have been blessed before, you have not seen blessing. 
We're talking of a man of God that has given out 27 aircraft. How many cars have you given out? How many cars? In fact, how many motorcycles? Or how many bicycles? You remember one time we parked truck with bicycles to Sakete. There are ministers, they will praise God for even megaphone. How many megaphone have you given out? But all that is about to change. In the name of Jesus. Whatever you possess can never give you joy like what you give out. Are you with me? The excitement of your possession is just on that day. The moment you are and die down. But when God uses you to be part of somebody's life or ministry's life or something big, you part of something big. Even you can't do that big thing. God is not looking for somebody to do big things. What big thing can you do for God? We're talking of the word that span. This big sky without a single pillar. Have the seven seas in the hollow of his hand. What big things do you want to do for him? He measured the mountain on scale and put the heat on a balance. What big things do you want to do for him? Sometimes I'll just go on the net and see the wonders of God. You just go and Google where to see meat. You see it here. And they have two different colors. Atlantic and this thing. Just, and they will not mix water. It takes gold. Because the content, the salt content and this thing differ. They won't mix. They just they met there. So you can sail your distance and cross from one place to the other. It takes God to do that. Your need is small in his hand. You know, if my father is here, he likes taking us to water the ground. And we will do it, which is a normal thing on a day like this. I will not beg anybody. It's just for people that have caught the revelation. When I was coming, something came to my mind. There are seven people that will buy us the truck that we need. Listen. Just seven people. That's the first set of people that will come out and buy a truck. If you, if you are one of the seven, come out. My wife, join them. It's, see, before you come out, think of it too. It's in millions. They buy 15 ton self loading truck. We have two. Hallelujah. Whatever be the price. We are buying it this year because our crusade must kick up this year. This year. It's not next year. I'm not talking of seven. One, two, three. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. Thank you. One, two, three, four. Why the person thinking is thinking, I continue to bless this one. Thank you, everlasting God of glory. Worship your holy name. Oh, let your second glory come upon this the spirit of performance. You anointed David when he was little, following his father's sheep, and you said he will be king. And by the power of that is that anointing. It came to pass. And he became king. Oh Lord. It was not the power of man. Let that supernatural power descend upon this anointing oil. As I anoint the people. You will do for them. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
just take it and let them touch and touch their hair and talk to God. Why all of you begin to thank God for that truck? Just speak. Speak. And it shall come to pass. Just talk to God. Gently. Gently. Hallelujah, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank we you, just Lord. want to thank yes, Lord. you, Lord. Thank you for that truck. We will pack our equipment in it and go to several places to minister. In the name of Jesus. And everywhere we step into, you will remember these ones for good and open the door. Yes, no stagnation any longer. You'll begin to move. Your ministry move. Your businesses move. Move, move. Divine movement. Yes. Divine movement. Lifting in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name. I believe there is a rejoicing in heaven. Many places are waiting for us. We have the equipment. Just we had the I mean trucks before it became old. So we have to dispose of it. And we will load it like this before it cross Lagos. It will break down. And that's not the will of God. Hallelujah. See, some of you may not have the money as at the time we stepped out. But your account is credited from above. Amen. In the name of Jesus. What is looking for is your intention, the heart. And because you are showing it for, ah, there shall be miracle. In Jesus' name. Bishop, we will and we will pack the truck here. All eyes will see. And those of you that are here, you will see it either in your place where we come for crusade or on the net. Amen. It is done. Amen. Put your hands together. Amen. Do you know the good news? Another time when this kind of need comes, I know God will not call seven. Amen. He will just say one person. Amen. And he will have lifted all of these ones up. Amen. Then we will call for those that, the seven that wants to buy a helicopter. Amen. Amen. Because our village crusade is going to another level. Amen. We want to be able to hit several villages simultaneously. Amen. And the helicopter will just be jumping from one place and how, how things go and bless them here. You move to that place. When we handle a local government, the demon that they will flee even outside Nigeria before they will be able to look back. In Jesus' name. Ha. I see God on your side. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And the church gather 150,000 naira. That was the first big money I ever saw in life. What did you raise it for? For this house. I've told you the story before. For the building. 150,000. When our total free point ball was about 12,000. And God said, not to me, to my friend. Say, and he came to me and said, God said you should give the money, I should give the money to him for his Namibia project. Instantly. I didn't doubt him. What came to my mind was, if the thing was reversed, if he had said, 
All the money he has gathered for Namibia, God said he should give it to me. Will I say, let me go and fast and pray? And we have been friends, open to each other. So I faced the congregation. I said, this is what my friend said. Oh, I'm going to give him the money, so don't think he's still with me. And we handed over. People paid that pledge fast. The fastest response I've ever seen. Even till yesterday, I know today is different. Some people you use their tithe in advance to pay. Even the 12,000 we, we, we couldn't get the following month. Two months, things were, seems to be tight. It was a period of testing. You know what happened? When the nation had problem, what was it? Abiola, June 12th, Abiola, June 12th, June 12th pro problem. Heaven opened. I see heaven opening for people. God touch people from outside. In six months, we, we built this local church from one tenth place there. You just come. I told you the story, part of the story here. Like that, it was not by our contribution. Hey, we want to buy cement. If you have, no, 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 no. God wants to open great doors for a number of us. We're not raising money for the church. We're not raising money for pastor. We're not raising money for what is common that people raise money for, for equipment. By the grace of God, we have it. It's just a miniature part we are seeing. Store is loaded with equipment for crusade. So that's not our problem. For mission. Hallelujah. Yeah. For what? Mission. mission. And I'm persuaded next year, a number of you, we call with the car you want to donate. Yeah. We have pastors that are doing this work in villages. And just handing over one car for them, we change their mission. Well, we have done that several times. Giving, giving, giving cars to pastors in the village. Not just in the villages, but on this thing. And it changed the setting. God can use, I mean, we use, not can use what? We use you to change the setting. Amen. Go to open up and see what God will do. If we, like my father will say, I'll just act like him. He want to sow the seed of 100. Let a minimum of a hundred thousand towards the mission come out. Unless we don't have all the time again, we want to enjoy some special presentation. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Just hold it. Hundred thousand. Minimum of hundred thousand. This is not pledge. It's something to be fulfilled. God bless you. God bless you. If you are coming, you come. God bless you. I still believe there are people that should join. Come and join. God bless you. Lady, please join on behalf of my daughter. I know every year she normally, she's always a part. And she's flowing with us. Then those of us, those of you watching us out there, you can be part in any way. I have a way of getting across to you. Eh? Okay, please. Account number of the church. Put it up there. Pastor James. To help us do that. Oh, okay. I believe there are still more Bologna that are seated there. That God wants to do. Hallelujah. Take that thing now. Let them touch.
And if you are here, let your prayers cover your children too. You are standing not just for yourself, for your children, doors will be open. You and your children, cover them. This glory will go round. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting God of glory. I bless you for these wonderful people that have stepped out to be part of the mission work. Lord, we arise on their behalf. In the name of Jesus. Whatsoever your heart desire, the Lord will do for you. No struggle in your life. I decree supernatural lifting for your businesses, for your ministry, for your children, in the name of Jesus. And if any of you is sick, I speak healing in Jesus' name. God bless you. Hallelujah. So, you can comfortably run 50. Come out. Let's pray for those that want to give 50. God bless you. God bless you. Remember, it's not a pledge. We're not writing names and address and home number and days. We are working on trust now. Serious trust. Hallelujah. Fifty. You want to join them, you come. Coming out for Oh, just joining. Okay, that's good. Fifty. Take it round. Thank you, Jesus. The lifter will lift you up. No more struggle. All the hidden blessings shall begin to manifest in the name of Jesus. Your labor of the past will attract the harvest in now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting God of glory. Let your blessing flow mightily upon these wonderful people. Give them the grace to fulfill that which they stepped out for. And it shall not be burdensome for them. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. 25. 25. Oh, some close. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Bonjulo, Professor Thor. God bless you. 25. God bless you. See, see, there is no struggle. So I'm calling it. Nobody is forcing anybody to do anything. Just willfully being part. According to him, he wants us to hit three, have we? Three locations in the Republic of Benin. And by the grace of God. See, we are, we are, my wife and I arranged ourselves to stay till your match. Amen. What are we going to be doing? We want to do crusade. We'll be moving from one place to the other. To do crusade. Our money must not stop us. 
even over and above what we are doing. God can speak to you anytime. Just ask for the uh, uh, account number and wire something. We always have something to do. By the grace of God, within the time we came, we had dedicated uh, Boho <laughs> in one city. We're still going to do more. That's what we all of us are living for. As the people are praying, you are collecting your portion. You don't, you don't get what I mean. Amen. Whatever anybody is praying for, physically, I would say God has done it for, for us. We have our house, we have cars, we have. So, what again do, do I say I'm living for outside of the mission world? Nothing. Are you with me? And anyone that is part of that work, God is not unrighteous. See the way the Bible puts it. It's not unrighteous to forget your labor of law. He will mightily bless you. And Lord will honor you. He will bless you. Fulfilling that that brought you out shall not be burdensome to you. And you'll fulfill it in a hurry. In the name of Jesus. We answer your prayers. Bless you mightily. In Jesus' name. Amen. So pray for yourself. Oh. Thank you, everlasting God. And Lord, we answer your prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. You want to be part of the world by giving 10,000. Just come out fast. Ten thousand. themselves. You want to be part 10,000. The Lord will open doors and windows together. The former and the latter rings. Hi, Mama. God bless you. Mama. Enjoy one. You don't find one, man. Thank you, everlasting God of glory. Can still join if you want. Now stand in for your children, for your business, for whatever. Thank you, everlasting God of glory. I pray for this one. See, there are more people. Okay. Come, come here. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God in heaven.
You will answer your people in the name of Jesus. Joseph was called to the palace. And all his hidden blessing manifested. So shall it be concerning you. A hidden blessing will manifest. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Those children are blessed. In the name of Jesus. Open door of admission to university. We do well. That debt is paid for. You are delivered from debt. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting God. In Jesus' name we pray. Some people still need, you need to touch the anointing, you come and collect it. Thank you. If you want to fulfill, it's possible. You want to give 2,000, come. Fast. Or oh, have I done that? 2,000. We're making it easy on everyone. So you just be part according to your strength. I look high and low. Couldn't find nobody. Just write down. Nobody great. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Oh. Nobody greater. Nobody great. Nobody greater than you. Oh, such Praise the Lord. Let me bless them. Then, as you touch the oil, you can go back to your seat and continue praying so that there will be room for others to come forward. Let, let's pray, first of all. Open your eyes. Look at me. I saw a ladder. And I saw a number of you climbing up the ladder. To a higher level. Amen. Receive it. Amen. The Lord will take you to that level. Amen. He's waiting for you. Amen. It's a place of honor. Amen. A place of lifting. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your prayers are answered. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I saw some of you starting small, small businesses that God is breathing into and is becoming big, 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 big. And some of you with small business now, the breath of the living God is upon it. And it shall become big in Jesus' name. And the moment you touch the oil of anointing, go back to your seat and pray. So give room for the others to come.
We come faster than you expected. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Finally, you, you can afford a recharge card to be able to afford this one. 1,000 to be part. Come out. Sing, sing, sing. 1,000. Nobody greater. The people with presentation get ready. God bless you. Oh, I searched all over, searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I looked, I hear low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great, nobody great, nobody is greater than you. Remind you something. This church started in the sitting room. And we are where we are by the grace of God. I see a number of you becoming so lifted financially that giving out cars shall be small in your hand. You're stepping out today for 1,000. The time we come, you will give a million and it will be so easy for you because the grace of God will hit your seed and bring about a change. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just take this in hand. Could have find nobody. I look high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody greater than you. Call what that happened now a ritual. We do this just once in a year. But it's not a ritual. Something special had happened in your life. You see how cool I was calling and there is a response. That's how God will make you cool. You will call cool. Money will respond to you. Good businesses will respond to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me say this before I drop the mic. When we finish, please, my guest ministers, fellow ministers from other churches, you know, yearly, 
at this particular point in time, it's not at the chaos. We used to meet, we go to Yoruba church and I, for our buffet, it's ready. We just take one presentation after we have danced around. Or we shouldn't dance. We dance around, then we sit down, take one presentation and, and we go then the person making announcement will explain the other places of feeding. You understand? Yes, sir. All right. So it's open. If you want to give offering, you want to give anything, you can dance forward and drop what you want to drop or give us a danceable music. God bless you. And thank you, Father Lord, because we know rain has started now. The rain of blessing has started falling. Amen. And we receive. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And if you step out for anything, fulfill it. In the past, some people will step out and they don't fulfill. That was in the past. I believe everybody will talk through before you step out. Lord will bless you. Yeah. It's not pledge. It's not something we are waiting. I want to fulfill in the next. Something that God will bless you and you will fulfill it now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You just move your body. Hallelujah. Then the dance floor is open. We appreciate everyone that graced this occasion this morning and we appreciate daddy and mommy. Can we please put our hands together? Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So the reception this afternoon is actually for the external ministers, daddy's guests. Tomorrow is when we will feed the old church by God's grace. So please, let's take note of that. By his grace, tomorrow the church, the old church will be, will feed the old church. So this evening, we are still having our evening session and it's going to be our variety night this evening. Hallelujah. And it's also going to be the prize giving ceremony for the Edmund Daniel Foundation quiz competition that took place um, last Thursday. So please... All the participants for Edmund Daniel, you are requested to be in the church this evening. This evening will be starting by 5.30 p.m. 5.30 p.m. And I want to also announce that if you have testimonies since we started, you can please meet with us so that we can register your testimonies down. The grand finale of this year's Palace Court 2021 comes up tomorrow with our Thanksgiving service. And we're going to be starting by 8.30 a.m. in the morning. So tomorrow is when we are wearing our convention uniform. So now, this is important for all pastor's wives. Please take note. All pastor's wives, female pastors, ministers, and minister's wives of the World Overcomers Church. You are to wait immediately after this morning's session here in the church auditorium to meet with Mommy Gio, Reverend Mrs. Yvonne Quilimo, for a short meeting. Now, um, all the children and teenagers that participated in the EDF quiz, I already announced that. Please ensure that you are 